Hey, my name is Thomas and today I've got this 6 by 9 centimeter folding camera at Zeiss Econ Netter from around 1938. Uh, pretty cheap entry into the world of these large super medium format cameras. So we've got 8 pictures to shoot on a roll of 120 film and let's have a go. So folding camera because when you you open it like this it folds out. Zeiss Econ they did uh, two series of folding cameras back in the day it started in the late 1920s and then right into the 1950s the more posh lineup that was called the Zeiss Econ Econta and the more amateurish lineup was the Zeiss Econ Netta. This is a Netar. Um, the two lines, yeah, sort of not always easy to separate in terms of features and bells and whistles. Uh, both these lines came in different flavors. Uh, they all, uh, most of them used the 120 roll film that you know from Hasselblad and Kiev and Holger from today. Uh, but still it could be 6x4.5, 6x6 or 6x9 and this is a 6x9. Uh, the other way how you separate the models is in terms of what sort of shutter they've got, uh, different shutter speed ranges uh, and the lenses of course. So this one's got an f3.5 lens that was the most posh for a, a Netta. Um, the other versions usually had f6.3 or f4.5. As this is a 6x9 camera, it has a 10.5 centimeter focal length, 105 millimeters. And still, it's sort of a standard lens because the, the crop factor, if you want so, is 0.42 compared to normal 35 millimeter film. So, the film format of this is really, really huge. Um, we've got a shutter on this camera, a leaf shutter that runs 400th of a second as the shortest time, then all the way down to one second plus the B setting. The more simple models sometimes only at three shutter speeds like 25th, 75th, 200th of a second plus B. This one's got weight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, a range of nine different speeds, all the way from one second to 400th of a second. Uh, today, Normally the long times, like fifth of a second or slower, they don't work properly because these shutters are like many, many years old. So you would need to clean, loop and adjust to make all the shutter times running. On this camera, the tenth of a second runs and then the shorter times also. I'm really curious how the pictures will turn out because I didn't shoot this camera before you. This is a premiere. <laughs> Loading this guy is pretty straightforward. Yeah. You open the back, you replace the spool from the last film. Ah, oh, wait, here. So these are just flexible, so it sort of clicks in place like this. Mm, this is the roll of 120, just a standard film. Like for every current medium format camera as well. Place it in. Now comes the tricky part as always. Place it in here. You see it connects and here already come the arrows. Time to close the back. Keep this small window open and uh, just wind. This is a very old to use the small red windows. 
in these old cameras, but the good thing is it can't go wrong. Now you see some markings, some more markings. And there you've got the one. And you can be 100% sure uh, that the winding worked. There is no, no room for errors there. Always remember to close this after you want the film because the paper backing can, can uh, keep away the light from the film itself. But um, with this, this is much more sure, especially during daylight. Okay, here you see the taking lens of uh, 3.5, 10.5 centimeters. Back in the day, they didn't use millimeters. Uh, focusing is just like this. This actually only moves the front lens elements. It should have three lens elements. Focuses only to 1.5 meters, so maybe not a perfect portrait camera lens. Uh, and here you've got your shutter times, one through 400th of a second, and note they're not like today. This is like one second, half a second, then fifth of a second, tenth of a second. So the spacing is a bit different. Uh, it's not the current, the modern geometric spacing. You cock the shutter like this. Uh, you fire it from here. Click. Uh, now I took a picture, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. And um, now remember to wind the film because uh, the cocking and the winding isn't connected. Uh, and here you've got your aperture. So you said that, let's say around four, because I intend to shoot at open aperture. And this little guy, this is, we, we Germans call this a brilliant viewfinder. So you look through this from here, so you can hold the camera at waist level. And for landscape shooting, you just turn it around. Um, you've also got this fold-out viewfinder, very basic. And now you can look from, yeah, from behind the camera. This is your shutter uh, button. This is the button to open the camera when it's closed. Down here, you've got your winding. To wind, first open this window, it shows you the current number. Now you wind until the next number shows up. And there it is close you're ready to shoot the next shot there's a tree I want to take a picture of I would say it's five meters far um, five meters and now point and shoot wait for the people to go more people more people there's a lot of people did I cock the shutter And that was the picture. Three point five, five point six, eight, eleven. F eleven. I saw one hundred tenths of a second. I put this guy on an, this little, you can stand it up like this. That's very handy. Uh, infinity. And now we shoot. And that was it. <sighs> Not sure if that worked out. <laughs> I'm on seven, is that right? What? Did we take 
picture number seven no the last one was the portrait right if you hold the camera like this you really have to be careful that when you uh, here is where you cock it don't hold it like this because when you fire the shutter this lever will go down click this is the mechanism and if you have your hand here you risk that it can't move all the way down and then the shutter time is delayed and then you get a blurry overexposed shot so if you hold the camera and shoot it maybe support it here somewhere but never here so that you can interfere with the lever So as you can see the weather is a bit marginal and it's dark all the time this is uh, winter approaching so i thought it's a good idea to take some night shots um, fun fact is i loaded the wrong camera with film now <laughs> i've got two of these uh, zeiss econ netar 515 2 models uh, this one's equipped with an f 4.5 lens and the other one has got an f 3.5 lens however i'm shooting now at f 16 so i think the image quality should be basically the same all these lenses are only triplet designs so they don't perform as well as for example a uh, zeiss tsar these are lower grade lenses anyway um, it's a nice camera to use for night shots because it's so light white and who cares that it's slow to operate when you've got all the time anyway uh, to do your settings on a tripod Some things never change so for example here here you've got your standard uh, thread for any cable release even for today um, the two things I don't like when using this camera on a tripod number one of course the viewfinder so this 4.5 version has got this small fold-out affair and there is actually a piece of glass in here but it even decreases the image when you peek through it whereas the other one that I've got is a little bit bigger but there is no glass it's just a see-through affair super basic but actually i prefer the see-through over this uh, the other thing i don't like is that the tripod socket is here right at the corner of the body and there's also no nice base around it so the connection to the tripod is a little bit a little bit marginal but okay by the way, the name of the company that made this camera is Zeiss. Uh, so we Germans, the, we have the famous last letter in the alphabet that uh, you American or English speaking guys call Z. We call it Z. It's a really harsh sound. So Zeiss Econ Netta, that's what this camera is called. And of course, the most, the newest camera from Zeiss, that's the ZX1, the ZX1. The great thing about this camera actually is the lens. Now this is called an Anastigmat. That's not a brand name. This is not a Zeiss lens. They bought these lenses for this uh, cheap range of Netta cameras from uh, other manufacturers. So the great thing is not the quality of the lens, but the, I love this 105 millimeter and with a 0.42 crop factor that transfers into something like a 45 millimeter lens for your standard 35 millimeter camera so it's a little bit wider than a typical 50 mil which i love and the f3.5 uh, it's, it's like an f1.5 so it's really uh, you have a lot of uh, blurry background uh, great bokeh even uh, the only thing is that these anastigmat lenses they are made from only three lens ornaments and that means even when you step down to 16 or 22 the four borders and corners are never going to really sharpen up very nicely for that you needed um, not a netta but then an econta camera with a more upmarket lens uh, for len lens element design like uh, a zeiss zeiss tessa so eight uh, photo has been taken now i just wind on this is like every other medium format film wind 
and wind and wind and eventually now the whole film is on this spool and you can take it out Time for the verdict. Uh, yeah, what shall I say? Uh, super cool to shoot a camera like that. Uh, these cameras were also made in 6x4.5 and 6x6 formats. Uh, maybe that's a bit more practical. On the other hand, the 6x9 really is something special. If you get a shot right, it really looks stunning even today. Uh, the lenses are not made to modern standards, uh, especially in terms of corner sharpness and also I guess if there is uh, yeah, stray light coming in or backlit situations, because these are uncoated lenses, you have to be careful or use it for your creative purposes. Unfortunately, in this dull weather today, we didn't have a chance to test that out. Uh, apart from that, operating the camera is a little bit, yeah, it takes some time. Uh, you do one step after the other, focusing, uh, metering with an external meter. Uh, setting the aperture and shutter speed and stuff like that. Also make sure you don't make any mistakes like what I showed you with this small lever on the shutter uh, that can delay the shutter itself and then you get blurry shots or you also can easily do uh, double exposures because the film transport and the shutter winding are not connected to each other in this model. There are other models where there is a little bit more of that uh, stuff already built in, but this basic model doesn't have it. So, great fun, also uh, a great experience to shoot, but yeah, surely this is not an everyday camera. And also if you are like in a situation where you want to take, I don't know, you go to a street festival or something, you burn through a roll of film very, very quickly, only eight exposures. Uh, these cameras are pretty cheap today. Uh, they are not really sought after. I'd, I'd say this camera is maybe worth 30 or 40 euros and then even then it takes some time to sell it. Uh, overall, I love shooting it, but I'm also <laughs> very happy that I have a lot of other cameras. Time to fold up the folder. One thing I really like about these uh, cameras is how small and compact they are and uh, really you can transport it. It's, it can't get any smaller given the huge film format. So uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video, found it maybe even interesting or useful. If you did so, then please leave a like and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so yet. It's a great, great, great help. And also many, many thanks to all you guys who already did subscribe. I really appreciate your support. Last not least, uh, hit the small bell button for notification whenever I upload my next video. And in case you've got any questions or comments, write something down in the comment section below. I love to read all your comments and I will happily answer every single one of them. So stay safe, uh, stay healthy, have a great time, live long and prosper. And I see you in the next video. Bye.